sisters. How are you? Um, I wanted to hop on here really quick. I apologize. I know I haven't posted anything like at all on social in like a week. Um, we had a death in a sense in my um, husband's side of the family. So we were traveling a lot for that. And then I myself was sick. So anyways, um, no excuses, but I just was not able to do that because, or to record or post anything because on top of that, it's the first semester or the first week of the spring semester of, um, you know, this year of nursing school for me. So anyways, it's just been really insane, but I'm back. Um, I noticed that my videos are pretty long, so I'm trying to keep them shorter for you guys. <laughs> so that way I'm not just babbling on. But the video uh, theme that I had for last week <clears throat> was mental health. And the reason why I want to talk about that, it's probably like, to me, thinking back, the most important thing um, that I could tell you guys. I mean, I know I said he isn't worth it was the most important thing. And it is like, you know, you come first, but that's part of mental health and self-care too. Um if for you, those of you who don't know me, I've struggled with mental health <clears throat> since I was in like junior high school. When I was 13 years old, my doctor pulled my parents out of the room and told them that I would die if I didn't get the stress out of my life because I was just struggling with anxiety and things like that so much. And as I got older, um, I had really bad anxiety as a teenager. Um, and I took medication for it and went to therapy and saw a psychiatrist and all of those things. Um, and I stopped for like, a while for like 10 years um and then after I had my daughter I suffered a lot with postpartum depression and anxiety which you'll come to you know learn about and deal with that later when you have kids um if that's something that affects you in the future but I have recently well more recently been diagnosed with PTSD which I've discovered is really the root of all things that I've suffered with throughout my entire life and it's a huge part of my personality and who I am um and I want this stigma around it to stop, not around me and PTSD, but I mean, just around mental health in general. I think as a community and with our friends and as a society, we have to stop thinking of mental health and physical health as separate necessities or separate entities in themselves. Mental health is health. I mean, period. You're, um, think of like, your body, right? If you get meningitis, that's a, a virus or a bacteria that can attack your spinal cord, which affects your entire body. And there's, I picked a really crazy disease, obviously. Um, but it's, it's an outside source that affects your body. And the way that you heal is through treatment, right? You have to take medication, you have to get rest, you have to do all of these things. Um, and if you don't, it can kill you. Well, your brain is an organ just as much as your spinal cord is an organ, right? So you can, it's not as much of a virus as it is an illness. It acts as an illness, right? It's something external that has happened to you that literally affects the chemistry in your brain. And it's nothing that you can control. And the way that you fix it is through treatment, through talk therapy, through um, different kinds of therapy. Maybe um, you need to take medication and things like that, but it's no different than fighting off a cold or fighting off pneumonia or fighting off meningitis. I mean, it's all the same thing. And the way that we prevent ourselves from getting sick physically is by, um, you know, moving our bodies, drinking our water, um, taking our vitamins, things like that, all the stuff that the doctor tells us to do, right? And when we don't do it, we're more prone to uh, gaining physical ailments and, and catching diseases and illnesses. It's the same thing with our mind. We have to protect our mind and, um, you know, practice self-care and really make sure that we are building up our immunity to outside things and toxic things that can happen in our life. Um, you can't control the things that happen to you, but you can help to prevent the way that your body will react to them. And so nothing that happens to you mentally, if you come... Um, you know, you're in high school now, so maybe the things that you're suffering with now are more like um, grieving. Maybe you've lost a mother, a brother, um, something like that. Maybe you're uh, battling with eating disorders, right? That's a mental illness. Maybe you're binging or purging or experiencing some anorexia and bulimia things going on. Maybe you're um, suffering with a lot of anxiety, right? Maybe like I know 
um, the thing right now with, or at least when I was in high school with teenagers was we drank a shit ton of caffeine and a shit ton of alcohol. Well, if you want to give yourself anxiety, drink a shit ton of caffeine and a shit ton of alcohol, right? So uh, maybe you're battling with anxiety or maybe you're suffering from um, bullying and, and it's induced depression, but you don't heal on your own. Can you? Will you get over these things? Yes. But from my experience, take it from my experience, something very traumatic happened to me as a teenager. A couple of things traumatic happened to me as a teenager. And I bottled it up in any um, kind of memories or thoughts or um, personality traits that I had from that moment on. I contributed to having anxiety or having depression. I ended up getting diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Um, which if you don't know is a chronic pain disease and in doing I I decided I didn't want to live this way anymore right I've, I felt like I was a prisoner in my own mind because of this traumatic experience at the hands of somebody else that completely affected my entire life and I thought I was strong enough to fight it on my own and you're a strong person and you're strong enough to fight anything but the definition of strength to me is having the strength to seek out help when you need it so the first step for me was researching it Realizing that my body has a physical response to um, the, the traumas that I'm dealing with in my mental health, that I'm still having triggers and um, flashbacks and, and experiences from. Um, the first time I, th I even spoke these things into existence or even talked about them, and being completely transparent with you guys, was on Monday with my therapist. The first time in 10 years I've ever told anybody, not a relative, not my sister, not my, my best friend for 25 years. Nobody in the entire planet has known what happened to me until Monday. It was the most freeing experience I've ever felt in my life. I thought if I spoke that into existence, part of me still does, the world was going to end. But guess what? It didn't. In fact, I felt more free than I ever have since that day that that happened to me. So what I'm getting at is that don't be afraid to ask for help. Stop being afraid of judgment and what people will think of you. If somebody loves you, they won't think of you any differently. If anything, they're gonna try and help you. And maybe the help is unwanted, but it's out of love, right? Don't be mad because somebody's trying to get you to seek help or something like that. I understand it's frustrating, but um, you know, people pushing me to seek help when I felt like I didn't need it was was enraging to me, but they're doing it out of love, right? There are so many resources available to you when you're a teenager. You have on-site school counselors, psychologists on campus. You have um, the school nurse you can go to, your school counselors, your teachers, right? So um, you have friends, which at this age, if, if you're going through something really big, like if it's more than just depression, anxiety, if it's a PTSD or a grieving thing or something like that, um, similar to what I've been through, you know, maybe a lot of your friends won't understand, but I guarantee even though these people are older than you and maybe it's weird going to seek out a, a school site psychologist or therapist or whatever counselor, they have been through because they have more life experience, something probably as traumatic as you have, even if it's different and they'll be understanding and compassionate and they understand as a doctor understands how the physical body works and how to treat it, they'll understand either how to help get you better or they'll send you somewhere that can get you better. They'll send you to somebody who has the tools, whether that's talk therapy and screaming at the top of your lungs and crying and freaking out like I do in therapy and punching shit and yelling and, and crying and just getting all of the emotion out in a place that's non-judgmental or you know, getting some medication, helping to balance out your neurotransmitters. I don't think people really understand that mental health is not like, oh, I'm feeling sad. I'm just going to get over it. No, there are chemicals in your body that your body creates. And if your body, for whatever reason, is creating too much or too little of them, that causes mental illness. And so sometimes you just need to regulate them. And it's not always forever, right? A lot of the times it's temporary. So my advice Stop thinking of it as something weird. Seek the help if you need it. Don't question seeking help. Just do it. Your life will be so much better off for it. You're amazing. 99% of people that I've come across at some point. And it's not 
a forever thing. This is like you go to therapy and you take medication as long as it takes for you to heal. You do yoga, you meditate, you do what you need to do to get your mind right, to be the best possible you that you can be, the happiest you that you can be. Until recently, until I started going to therapy specifically for PTSD and I haven't been to therapy in years, I didn't think that living fully happy was even an option. I didn't think, I know it's not crazy, but in my mind, with my family, I'm happy. In my job, I'm happy. At school, I'm happy. I'm still chasing my dreams. I know I'm still an amazing person, but I'm still having nightmares and I'm still dealing with um, certain issues that I have with relationships with people and trusting them. Um, even though my husband is the most amazing and loving person, I trust him wholeheartedly. There are barriers in communication that I have because of the traumas that I've been through. And I didn't realize that those things can eventually go away. And if they don't, I'll have the tools that I need to handle them. The same can be for you, whether it's you're just dealing with anxiety and you need to figure out how to get the F off the caffeine um, and stop drinking and, you know, staying up all night long so that you feel better or you're, you know, so you were sexually abused and you need to figure out how to get over that um, or you lost somebody close to you and you're trying to grieve through that process. Or maybe you're just feeling down and there's really no reason. Maybe you're being bullied and you don't know how to get yourself out of that hole. But whatever it is, it will pass. And there is always, always a light at the end of the tunnel. It'll never go away. But you will be able to overcome it. So mental health is just as important as physical health. In fact, mental health is health. Your body is a whole. It's not one or the other. It's not half and half. It's not split down the middle. Your mental and your physical health are in this circle together and they create who you are. And you need to take care of both. All right, guys, I'm going to go to work now. I'll see you later. I love you. If you liked this video, if it meant something to you, if you could relate to it, let me know. You know, um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me, share it with your friends. And I will see you guys next time. I promise not to be gone so long this time. Sorry. <laughs> Bye.